a right click and paste and here we go now that what we need to do now is some of the let me get this kind of out of the way here and open up our text here See if I can squeeze this up here yeah, there we go now what we need to do now is assign some of this text here to some of these tags like h1 and the p just so that the browser knows that, okay these things between the h1 tag has to look like this these things between the p tag has to look like this yeah let's go ahead and do h1 here i want to go ahead and make this all fancified and i'll be back in just a second now that i've assigned certain tags to certain parts of our text which again is going to tell the browser that okay based on the css I need to treat this a certain way, I need to treat this a certain way, I need to treat this a certain way, and if something um, that is not that does not have these tags there, then it's going to be treated as what is defined in our body section down in here. So, and likewise with, uh, and, and this generator, the CSS generator, is just barely scratching the surface when it comes to the different CSS tags or attributes. I mean, there's a gazillion of them out there. A lot of places you can go to to find those, or you can just wait until we get our CSS video series out, and then just check that out, because we'll cover them all. Now then, what we need to do now, because the browser is going to be totally confused, it doesn't know, you know how to treat this stuff, it does not know anything about my CSS sheet. So I need to put it right here above the head tag, and I need to, like I said earlier, put my opening and closing style tags in here so that the browser knows that, hey, this isn't just a bunch of gibberish, this is some style tags. This, this relates to my cascading style sheets. So first I'm going to go ahead and put all the code on the page here, then, and show you how it looks in the browser, then I'm going to take all that code off of the page and then just put a link to it and show you what it looks like then. So let's go ahead and get into this and put all of this code here, right click, select all, right click, copy. So I'm going to leave that all right there for now. And then I'm up here going to put in the opening style tag and the closing style tag. And if you don't understand any of this stuff here, don't sweat it, just do it. And that is that uh, we're telling the browser that, okay, our style or cascading style sheet is text and it, of course, is CSS. Then we need to put our closing angle bracket there and come down a bit and just put our closing style tag which as is in most cases the same brackets, same you know alligator or pointy brackets, greater than, less than, whatever you want to call them, then the uh, forward slash and then in this case the word style. And as you may know by now some op or some tags do not necessarily have a closing tag, but we've covered that in private. Now then we need to in between these two we need to put our code that I copied from down here. Paste, bada bing, bada boom. Let me show you up here. Let me make some room here. And then down here, again, above our closing head tag, we have the closing style tag, and we have all of the other text that we just put in there. So let's go ahead and save this. Control S to save. Go to our web page here. Plain, nothing, white background. And let's refresh this. Bam! There you go. See how easy that was? Now then imagine that your website of 400 some odd pages has this, say your navigation bar uh, assigned, or that particular font I was talking about earlier. On all of those pages, but you got to come back and you got to change that font. Well, let's just demonstrate that, shall we? Come on back here. Let's say it's in our H1 tag, and we want to change it to something funky. Oh, and as far as fonts go, and again I touched on this in, in the prior video where we dealt with the fonts, you want to, you don't want to use some off-the-wall font in here just because it's really cool. Uh, I know this kind of goes against the grain of my example, but you know, I gotta say this. You want to make sure that the font that you have in here is something that is relatively common because if your uh, visitor's browser or if your visitor's computer does not have the same font style then it's going to show a default like some plain Jane looking Arial or Times New Roman instead of your fancified A L B A Alba. I love you Jessica. Anyway it, it won't show you the Alba font 
it, it'll just uh, show them you know whatever is uh, default on their browser so let's go ahead and control s this come on back here and refresh and you can see it changed the font on all 378 pages. Bada bing, bada boom. That's how easy it can be to change your fonts or to change whatever uh, elements you have on your CSS globally. That's what I mean by globally versus individually. Having to go through each and every individual page to change your font or link color or table size or image uh, dimensions. Bing, bang, boom. Now then, let's go ahead and show you how you can do this off page. Let's open this back up here, and I want to copy and cut all this stuff out of here. I want to leave the opening and closing style tags, so I'm just going to delete those. But everything else, I want to just right-click, cut, and get them on out of there. Get them on out of there. Okay, and I didn't necessarily have to cut them. I just wanted to delete them. And then delete these guys. Now, instead of the opening and closing style tags, at this point, since our CSS is going to be off-site or it's going to be on our server, then we need to have a link in here that is going to tell the browser where it's located at. So let me go ahead and put in the link here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Pretty simple, really. Now, before we throw that link in there, I also want to tell you that this is the code that we copied from that uh, CSS generator, but we have not given it a name yet. So we need to do that. And we're going to, uh, to try to simulate the fact that we've uploaded this to our server. We're just going to save it in the same folder that that web page is in, that our uh, first web page is in. Now, then let's go ahead and give it a name. Oh, let's say, and you can name it anything you want. But for the sake of this, I'm going to go with main CSS. But the key is you got to end it in CSS. Uh, just to avoid confusion here, let's name it... Um, joe.css. Again, you can name it anything you want, just as long as it ends with .css. And this being a text editor, we need to make sure that it is not going to be a text file, per se, but a cascading style sheet. This one is named joe.css, saving it in the HTML folder along with the uh, same page, that's this guy right here, as our file. Oh, dang it. I shouldn't have clicked on that. Okay, so uh, <laughs> my mistake. Let's rename it joe.css and save. Cool. Well, let's go ahead and put that link in our first page real quick. Here we go. There's no particular order here. I mean, you can have these three attributes any which way you want, but this is just the way that I'm going to do it. Uh, just so long as it is telling the, the browser that this is a link, and that it's relative to a style sheet, got to be in the double quotes, and you can just put it in, even if you don't know what the heck this stuff is, don't sweat it, just do it exactly as it is here, and all will be right with the world. And that the type equals text forward slash CSS, and that's in the double quotes as well, and that the uh, reference is, this is the name of the file, and ours is not simple, it is Joe. Now then, if this were not located, if our CSS were not located in the same folder that this particular website is located in, then you need to put in the absolute URL. Absolute URL is the HTTP, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, just like a normal web address. But it is in the same directory, in this case, folder on our desktop, but it is in the same directory as our uh, web page. So we got rid of all the uh, CSS code in here. We got rid of the style, opening style tag and the closing style tag. We placed all that with this one line of code, and let's see if it works. Control S. Come on down here to our web page. And frankly, this should not change if everything works well. So, bam. Okay. Now, just to test it, let's view the page source. Bam! See, instead of all of that coding in there, we got just the one line, and you see it's named joe.css. Now, then just to again show you, maybe this guy up here in the view, let's rename it to something else. Get rid of this. Let's open that up. And here's our folder that all of our web pages are in, and we've got a name Joe here, so I'm just going to select it by clicking on it once, click on it again and just rename it Mary. Yeah. And you can see that it's still a cascading style sheet, so we haven't changed the extension at all, and we just changed the name. So now we need to change on the text file here, 
where it is referring to Joe, you need to just refer it to Mary. Oh, and it's got to be exact, too. So if, if I were to put capital M here, and it's all lowercase you know, in actuality, then it isn't going to work because the browser is looking for something that starts off with a capital M A R Y. So again, it's got to be exact. And then we control S, bring up the page, refresh, everything's the same, which as it should be, view, page source, Mary. See? So again, the name doesn't have anything to do with it just as long as it is exact in our text here. And again, you can have this first, as long as you got the purple link here first. That tells the browser, hey, from here on out, we gotta, we're dealing with a link. But you can have this, second, third. The order of these three attributes makes no difference whatsoever. Just as long as you got them all in here, you're good to go. And that's pretty much it. And again, too, you can go into the... Uh, the, once you've got the generator, the CSS generator going, um, you can go into here and you can make any changes you want. But that brings us to the end of this video on CSS, and I hope you learned something, and I hope you got a little more of an itch to learn more about cascading style sheets, because as you found out here, it can be a major time saver. So thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.